Hey there, space weather viewers. Welcome to the Daily Space Weather Show. If you want the in-depth, most comprehensive daily space weather content in the known universe and the most detailed solar imagery, well, you've come to the right place. So these are the past couple of hours and 94 actions from the GO-16 SUVI. And you see that bright spot there south of the equator, right in the center of the solar disk? That's sunspot 3738. And it is by far the most active sunspot of the past 24 hours. The largest flare was around 6 o'clock universal time this morning. There we've highlighted it for you. And here are the past 24 hours from Solar Dynamics Observatory. So yeah, kick back, relax, and enjoy the scenery. There's always a story to be told when you're gazing at the most interesting star at which to gaze. The closest one, El Sol, Helios, the Sun, etc. And by the way, thanks for tuning into the Smash News Network, least busted name and news. Congratulations on realizing the channel exists. Don't forget to press the like button, leave us a comment, press share, especially if your posts are able to be seen on social media. We encourage you to share with your friends and your foes. Now, if you're new to the channel, press subscribe, and don't forget to visit the links below the video. We've got merch. We're all over social media. Do a search for Smash O Mash. You'll find us all over the place. And since we like to mix things up, let's put together a quote. Since we believe in you, don't have the heart to let us. Don't have the heart to let us down. So here's a quote from Abraham Lincoln. I'm a success today because I had a friend who believed in me, and I didn't have the heart to let him down. Now, whether you're, whether you're fans or not of Abraham Lincoln, I know people will say, he broke federalism. Yes, yes, I know, I'm aware. I'm aware of the wartime spending and so forth. However, still a good quote. So, of course, successful people make our own luck, and we want each and every one of you to be successful. So, don't have the heart to let us down. And let us know in the comments. What you define as success, of course, everybody's got a different definition of that. So let us know in the comments. So we have an uptick in the radio flux for the past 24 hours. The 10.7 centimeter radio flux now at 180 solar flux units. 180, that's 1.8 million Jansky of radio flux density. There are the past year of data. The radio flux is the black line, and you can see how proportional that is to the red line, which is the sunspot number. Space Weather Enthusiast Dashboard is forecasting a little bit of geomagnetic unrest late tomorrow evening. So tomorrow, Thursday into Friday morning, might see some geomagnetic unrest and see yesterday's Daily Space Weather video. If you didn't miss, if you didn't see our video, you may have missed a forecast for a coronal mass ejection impact. It was kind of stealthy. So, yeah, uh, you can find the videos linked below here. YouTube.com forward slash smash mash slash videos. So not a lot of forecasting there for NOAA. NOAA's not really expecting any significant space weather on the way. We, however, are. And as far as ESA, ESA's got a little bit more excitement there in their forecast. Looks like a coronal hole high-speed stream, so that kind of makes sense. Kind of makes sense as we've got a significant coronal hole uh, right just north of that major sunspot, so that's always exciting. Let's take a look at Earth's magnetic moment from space for the past four hours. It's our geospace magnetosphere movie. We try to show it daily on the channel when the information is available. The past four hours of magnetohydrodynamic pressure depicted there via the Space Weather Modeling Framework. At the ground level, things also quite calm. So we have a pretty diffuse and quite slow solar wind, no majorly strong magnetic fields showing up or anything like that. So things are calm in the geospace, expecting a couple of upticks in the coming days. Again, see yesterday's Daily Space Weather video to see the coronal mass ejection impact that we imparted. KP index is 1.67. That's a geomagnetically calm situation. 
1.67 is the KP index, an average of global geomagnetism. Looking at solar wind here, measured a million miles away from Earth, the ACE spacecraft orbits Lagrangian point one. And it's currently below 400 kilometers per second, so pretty slow solar wind there, only 3.4 protons per cubic centimeter, and very similar at Discover, which also orbits Lagrangian point one. The gravitational equilibrium point in between the Earth and Sun. That way a spacecraft can stay out there without using up a lot of fuel. So, yeah, right now, less than 5 protons per cubic centimeter for solar wind density, solar wind velocity here, just over 400 kilometers per second. Now our GOES magnetometers there, they're quite smooth. You can see yesterday the, the GOES-18 completed its maneuvering around... 2100 universal time since then they have been chilling the goes 16 and the goes 18 next looking at the heliosphere magnetism and earth remains in a north pole magnetic sector and we are seeing some variations there happening in the east so not only filamentary motions but sunspots are rising so that can change the magnetic environment rapidly Although for now, Earth remains in a North Pole sector. Here's our line of sight field plot. That is the past four days of the solar B field, polar fields, and photosphere magnetism, which brings us to coronal holes. Once again, we have a well-defined one in the Northern Hemisphere. It is also of North Polarity, North Pole-oriented coronal hole. Depicted there in green, you can see a conflagration of magnetic field lines there. That's the sun's B field, those blue potential field surface source lines. So there's the latest image. That is a North Pole-oriented coronal hole. And here they are from SDO. Coronal holes from SDO. There's a 24-hour video for you at 30 frames per second. That is quite a significant coronal hole. It's very well defined, and you can expect to see more and more of those in the coming 10 months as they are most equatorial oriented around solar maximum. So, and we've had a shortage of coronal holes throughout this solar cycle so far. We've also had a big uptick in sunspot number, which is what we'll get to next. So sunspot number here rapidly crossing the 150 line now up to uh, 179. 179 sunspots is the current number according to Royal Observatory of Belgium. We've got a very high likelihood of X-class solar flares. Look at that, a 61% chance of X-class solar flares from sunspot 3738. Right when it's in the Earth-facing portion of the solar disk, that is a good thing for all of you aurora chasers out there. So yeah, if we see an X-flare, that's gonna increase the likelihood of coronal mass ejections. And when coronal mass ejections happen right from the center of the solar disk, they're very likely to have earthly directed components as they diffuse their way out through the solar system. So fantastic there. And let's move on to imagery from SDO. So there you go. There's the SDO continuum for the past 24 hours. And look at the size of sunspot 3738. We've also got a number of new sunspot groups there in the east, which account for this big increase in sunspot number. So mainly just growth here in the past 24 hours, although sunspot 3738 didn't grow too much. Here are the magnetic fields, and we'll zoom way in on that sunspot since it is our T-mass having produced a number of M-class solar flare events. So there's an extreme close-up, and you'll see a lot of jet black with white right near it, and that is the recipe for solar flares. That's why the likelihood of an X-class flare is so high because of that magnetic shear. So great imagery there from the SDO helioseismic magnetic imager. And of course, there is the continuum. So you won't see a lot of growth here, but there is a little bit of magnetic complexity building for the past 24 hours. Once again, it's 30 frames per second from Solar Dynamics Observatory. As far as energetic particles and flares, no solar energetic particle events, but again, a number of M-class events. 
no less than five in the past 24 hours. Largest one, like I said earlier, was around six o'clock universal time this morning. Uh, they've been low class, low M class events, uh, but the background flux has come up as well. So that's promising for those new rising sunspots also. And there's another active region looking like it's rising in the northeast. So sunspot number here could continue to rise. Fingers crossed for that. Moving on to the SDO's 94 angstroms wavelength. And check out all the action from sunspot 3738. Again, that is our T mass, the most active sunspot. Here's an extreme close up. Again, no less than five M class flares mixed in there. And let's take a look at a solar system forecast. So here are the planets today, literally from the planetstoday.com. If you want to look at your solar system model, here's where things will be in one week on July 17th. So that's what's going on in space. Here's what's going on over our head. This is from skyandtelescope.org. We've made a star chart for our location here in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. If you like cycling, come visit. Perhaps do a ride with the Lehigh Valley Cycling Club. Maybe I'll even show up. You never know. All right, so, yeah, that's what's going on overhead right now. We've got a setting Jupiter there. And if you're viewing the the low horizon just after sunset, you may see Venus and Mercury there, trailing the sun as they set in the west. Next is our astronomy photo of the day. Located in the constellation of Sagittarius, a number of active nebulae there. So the pinkish color, that would be hydrogen. And if you see the blue color, the blue color is uh, reflected starlight. So some rowdy stars in those areas. One of those is M8 from the Messier catalog, entry number eight. You've also got NGC 6559 there, the Sagittarius triplet. Check it out yourself if you like at apod.nasa.gov. Next, moving on to CMEs. What do you got? Well, CMEs have been minor for the past 24. We do have a comet streaking in there and disintegrating, vaporizing, becoming flotsam and jetsam. And let's cut to our custom coronagraphs before we move on to solar filaments. Once again, a 24-hour video there. You can see that Comet making the transition from the blue Lasco C2, uh, C3 into the red Lasco C2. And only some minor coronal mass ejection events there. So it doesn't look like anything earthly directed. And if it is, it's very minor. Moving it a little bit closer here and adding the 193 angstrom 60 minute running difference. Not half bad. Which brings us to filaments. So plasma filaments are known to become coronal mass ejections. Here they are from Cerro Tololo, Chile's ground-based hydrogen alpha telescope. And that one over in the east closest to the equator, that has been named. If you want to name filaments after your friends, your foes, or even yourself, join us over on X, otherwise known to sane people as Twitter, x.com forward slash smash o mash. Follow the hashtag, name that filament, let us know which filament you want to be named, and then just tag us in the post. And you too can name filaments. There's a grayscale imagery. We show that because it shows prominences. And we're going to close out with the SDO imagery of filaments. Also, the GOES-16 SUVI is good at showing filaments. You can see crown prominences at both poles. Expect to see more of that for the coming six months. 
as we get closer and closer to solar maximum. Also some flare activity there happening on that western limb. So exciting times for space weather as things ramp up once again. Expect to continue to see higher highs and higher lows. Next bonus feature starting out with satellite charging hazards and they're non-existent. It's smooth sailing. The GOES electron flux here remains low. Forecast model is for it to remain low as well. That's NOAA's forecast represented by the green boxes. Here's the Australian Government Bureau of Meteorology. The ionosond. Basically, it's showing you the vibrational frequency of the ionosphere there in megahertz. That's millions of vibrations per second. And I got to say, things are pretty nominal up there. Pretty nominal. Nothing to write home about going on in the ionosphere. Nothing bunker worthy. Here's the anomaly gram depicting anomaly on megahertz from a 30-day median. South Atlantic anomaly remaining here stable for weeks and weeks around the South American coastline at about 45 degrees west longitude instead of in the middle of the continent where it's been for years and years. So that's what's going on with that. Next total electron content and maximum usable radio frequency from our global ionosphere now cast. The latest high res images from SDO. Hey, check it out. New sunspot rising up there. It certainly looks like it. Yeah, so there's another new group just peeking over the limb. So yeah, expect sunspot number to continue to increase once again into tomorrow. There's sunspot 3738. Once again, that is our T-mass. A great example of a delta right in here, right in that area right there. You see the North Pole oriented field there mixed in between two South Pole umbrae. Also south of it there, you can see a North Pole umbra there. So all of those features, a lot of magnetic shear there in the middle and between the two main umbrae, all of those things make it a bad ombre, that ombre. Those ombre are some bad ombres. Unless you like solar flares, then there are some good ombres. So that's what's going on. We'll close out with the last 24 hours in the spectacular SDO 304 angstroms plus 193 60 minute running difference. So filaments, 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 coronal holes, highly active sunspots, very high likelihood of X-class solar flares. So we'll be keeping an eye on it so you don't have to. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to the Smash News Network least busted name and news. And until next time, may that solar wind be at your back.